Today I'm going to show you guys how to do some awesome finishing touches to your images in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Twitter at Flurn where you can ask us any kinds of questions about this or anything else in the whole world. Today we got a cool episode for you. Basically what we're doing, we're taking this image and this is by Florina. Very, very cool image. This is one of the winners of our spring contest. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to do some finishing touches with this image. So we're going to be going over things like sharpening. I'm going to show you guys how to take part of the image and actually make it part of an abstract background. So if you were shooting on a backdrop, like a seamless backdrop, and your background's a little bit just not interesting, this is going to be a really cool tip for you. We're also going to be doing some coloring, and I'm going to show you guys how to do an inverted soft light copy of your image to make your center of the image very exciting, and the rest of it not as exciting but it's a cool effect. <laughs> All right, I don't know what to call that thing. Let's get into our image. This image by Florina is, is just awesome. I really, really like it. And I saw it and I was just, I was thinking there's a couple of things that I would like this, just like to add to this to make it a little bit more interesting. So these are like what I would call the finishing touches. Like obviously this has already been edited and things like that. Here's just a couple more things that you can do to make it just a little bit more interesting. So one of the things we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool. So we're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm gonna sample just right here in like the flower area and we're just gonna paint this on a new layer. All right, just like that. Very cool, that looks good. And then I'm gonna create another layer. Let's just make this one invisible. And I'm gonna sample this part of the hair piece. Cause it's a really cool hair piece with all the flowers and everything like that. Okay, so we've got both of these layers and they're, they're each gonna do something slightly different. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command U on each of them. So click on it, Shift Command U, and that's just gonna hit desaturate them. Then we're gonna change them both to soft light. So let's just change this to soft light and that one to soft light. And then we can move it around. And you can see basically like this can become like an interesting part of our background. So now I'm just gonna kind of scale these images up a little bit. There we go. And then they'll, they'll just become a little bit, you know, more abstract. You can lower the opacity. I'm gonna hit V and then the number five to bring this down to like 50%. And there we go. That looks pretty cool there. And we're just gonna scale this one up there and put this here. And then we have a little bit of a, you know, blank area up there, but that's not really that big of a deal. All right, you can even lower the opacity again. Now, I don't want these necessarily visible over my subject. So I'm gonna hit shift, click the two of those and hit Command G, which is gonna group those together. And then I'm gonna just, we can grab a magic wand tool and everyone, you know, was using Photoshop for a long time. It's like, oh, magic wand, that's too, you know, beginner or whatever, but it's a really good tool. So if, you, if it's the best tool for the job, just use it. So I'm gonna hit, basically click right on the outside of here and you can hold down shift a couple times and that's just gonna select this background here. So we're selecting the background because this is the area I actually want the, uh, this background effect to be visible. So let's click on that, and then I'm gonna click on my layer mask button. There we go. And that's gonna go ahead and mask both those layers because they're in the same group, right? So this layer mask that's on the group defines where each of these layers is visible. And then the really cool thing is you can actually give each of these layers their own layer mask. So I'm gonna hit Command J on this one, and then we'll just do, you know, like another little flower effect there. All right, and we'll just paint black on our layer mask right over there. Okay. Pretty cool. So this is basically our layer masking and it's keeping it visible only where the background is. So, you know, obviously this is not gonna be applicable for every single image you guys do, but when you do have something like this, that's like, oh, I think it could use a little bit more um, interest or whatever in the background, this is a great way to get it. Just take some details from your image, blow them up, set them to soft light and you got this. Now I'm gonna add some more coloring to this cause it's not quite done in my opinion. So we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm just gonna pop my red channel we're gonna bring that up and then bring our blue channel up as well. I'm gonna hit Command I on that and then just kind of paint in here at like a 10% flow to just bring some of this coloring in from the side. So it's not like so, there we go. It's not just the same color in the entire background. All right. Cool. That looks pretty nice. And I'm kind of trying to match the colors of the image. You'll, you'll see that a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my curves adjustment layer and let's go to our red channel, pop this up a little bit and the blue channel, pop that down a little bit. 
this is going to bring it a little bit warmer. And anytime you're bringing your red channel up and your blue channel down, that goes to orange, and that's going to be really nice for skin tones. So I'm going to just make this a little bit more, I'm going to hit, basically make a black layer mask, except for around her face. So that's going to like warm up her face and around that area, and it's going to help draw our attention as a viewer to that area. So we can see here, just with that, those coloring things, here's the before and after with that. So it just kind of takes it from a plain sheet and now we're like, it's just a little more exciting and I'm looking at my subject, which um, two good things. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do, I'm gonna create a new image, new layer, shift option command N and then shift option command E for a stamp visible. And we're gonna zoom right in here and then I'm gonna just add more sharpening. Her eyes are pretty sharp still, but I think we can sharpen up a little bit more and that's gonna help us look right into her eyes. So let's desaturate this, shift command U will desaturate. And then I'm gonna change this from normal down to overlay. And we're gonna to go to filter, other, and here to high pass. Okay, now you can choose your radius that looks good for your high pass. If you don't wanna decide now, a really cool trick actually is you can right click on this layer and I'm gonna go down to create, or sorry, convert to small smart object. And now when I run a high pass adjustment layer on that, there we go. I can actually turn this high pass off and on and I can double click right here and I can change the radius of my high pass after the fact, which is a really nice little touch. If you guys have used this method for sharpening, um, the smart object is just a really great way to do it. Okay, so we've sharpened things and everything looks great, but I don't want this visible everywhere because sharpening, if you are gonna sharpen everything, then it's not gonna draw attention to your eyes. It's just gonna draw attention to everything. So, what we're gonna do is just gonna put a black layer mask on this, and then I'm gonna paint white, basically over her eye areas and this like little interesting details on her, on her dress and you know maybe over her lips and things like that. So turning this off and on, we can see that it actually does, you know, kind of bring in the attention right into the eye area of our subject. If you want this even stronger, just hit Command J, and that will duplicate your effect. So there we go. There's the before and then the after with our sharpening. And if you wanna change, again, you can go in here and you can change your high pass radius just by double clicking right there like this. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. There we go. So you can see it still has an effect but these are gonna be different because I went in and changed the radius of the actual high pass. Okay, now one more step we can do if we wanna draw attention Again, to the subject's face, right? So that means we can either enhance the attention on our subject's face, or we can take away attention from the other parts of the image. So we're gonna, we're gonna try that. I'm gonna hit a new layer. Again, Shift Option Command D for stamp visible. Shift Command U to desaturate that. Now I'm gonna hit Command I. I know it's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but you'll get there, trust me. Um, if you do wanna learn all of our keyboard shortcuts and just like a really great way of how to use Photoshop, like at a base level, like if this is going a little too fast for you, uh, check out our Photoshop 101 tutorial, it's awesome. We'll link it up on the screen right now. Just be here and you guys can like, it'll get you all the way up to speed in Photoshop so you'll be able to like follow along with all of our tutorials like a pro. Okay, so we're inverting that and I'm gonna change this layer from normal down to soft light. So we can see this is kinda of interesting. It's like an invert copy of our image and then converted to soft light. Um, what it does is it kind of like takes attention and contrast away from parts of the image. So I'm gonna lower down the opacity a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a layer mask on here and basically we're just gonna paint black over top of like the face area and other things like this. And that's gonna add some more of that contrast back. So we can see like, kind of like take some of the contrast away from the majority of the image. But if we leave it here in the face, then that's you know, that's gonna become the focal point of where you're actually looking in the image. So just a, a really cool effect there. Don't get to use that very often in Photoshop, but when you do, it's a really nice way to draw attention to a particular area of a photo. So let's just shift click all those layers. I'm gonna hit Command G and then let's, let's uh, view the before and after here. So there's our before and our after. Pretty cool. Just a nice way to draw attention, again, right to our subject's face as well as add a little bit more interest to the background. And you guys can do this with any types of images you take, whether you know whether they're on a regular background, you can cut a person out, whether they're on a seamless, whatever it is, 
these same techniques will work with all your images. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching Florent. I hope you had a really good time watching this tutorial. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got over 600 other tutorials just like this and we keep coming out with multiples every single week. If you like what we got going on, share it with your friends. Tell them what we got and uh, leave us a comment down below. Let us know how we're doing any episodes or interesting ideas you'd like to see here on flurn.com. We do read your comments and we listen to you. Thanks so much again and we'll flurn you later. Our social media said, guys said that was a really good ending to our episodes.